here is the subject of our video today. The Harley Benton T-Style Electric Guitar Kit. This is how mine turned out. So what does this kit come with? Of course, it's a kit that you put together yourself, so you should have some sort of handyman skills. It has Reading from the Toman website, this is a complete do-it-yourself electric guitar kit. It comes with a bolt-on neck. The body is made out of Rengis. You will see what that looks like better when I show the photos of what it looks like to build. It comes with a maple neck. It has a fretboard made of amaranth. The fretboard has dot inlays. Yes. It has a double action truss rod which can be accessed right here. It has a C neck profile and to me it's kind of more towards a modern C as opposed to a retro C neck profile. 22 frets. Um, the fretboard radius is 12 inches or 350 millimeters. The scale length is 648 millimeters, which is the typical Telecaster scale length. It comes with two single coil pickups. It has one volume control and one tone control, a typical Telecaster three-way switch, comes with chromed hardware, die-cast machine heads, and it comes with strings that are gauged from 9 to 42, and it comes with a natural finish that they encourage you to paint, which of course I did. So in addition to the intro song, which was recorded using this guitar into the uh, HX Stomp. I have a couple demos for you that were uh, created by playing through a real amp. Playing through a real amp mic'd up by an SM57. And so I have a clean sound demo. And then I have a crunch sound demo. And then I have a higher gain sound demo. Let's do the uh, the bridge again. Middle position. Neck position. A little noodling, a little clean noodling on the bridge pickup. bridge position. And a little noodling in the neck position. So I just activated the Tube Screamer on my Ibanez TSA 15H head that I went through for the clean section. So now we have a little bit of uh, grit or a little bit of dirt, not too much. 
And here's what it sounds like on the bridge pickup. Middle position. And the neck position. So now I switched over to the Orange Micro Dark, which is a higher gain amp than the Ibanez TSA 15H, which is uh, pretty clean, except for that it has a built-in tube screamer, which you heard before. So now we're going to hear what this guitar sounds like with a little bit more gain. Here we are on the... Here we are on the bridge pickup. Middle position. Neck position. If you're enjoying this video or getting something out of it, give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more videos and hearing my opinions and techniques and product reviews of gear that can be used in the home studio for music production, then subscribe to my channel. So now I'm going to go through a few photos that I took during the build process of putting together this electric guitar kit. Here is what the guitar body looks like. Apparently it's made out of a wood called Rengus that I've never heard of. And um, this is the guitar body after I have sanded it and applied a very thin first primer coat to it. This second photo also shows the same state of the guitar a little bit closer. And once again, even closer. So here it is after I put several primer coats onto the body of the guitar. There it is a little closer. Now we move to the state where I've already covered up the primer coat with a final coat. And here I used car paint, which I've heard that they did back in the 50s when before they came up with paints that were specific to guitars. And so this was uh, a sort of uh, touching up spray paint can made for touching up cars with a sort of uh, la lavender or purplish color, which is what I chose in terms of color for the guitar. Here is a photo of uh, the assembly of the neck. It's at the point where I put the tuning keys onto the head of the guitar. And here is the point where I'm screwing the bolts, the bolt-on neck, onto the body of the guitar. And now here's a front picture of the neck attached to the body of the guitar. I already have the tuning heads on and the string guides on. Here is a picture of what the box looks like when you open it with a instruction guide of how to assemble the guitar, which worked out fine for me. 
Here is a sort of somewhat failed project of where I tried to magnetically isolate the pickup cavities of the guitar with some homemade isolation paint. I added some isolation paint even to the back of the pick guard. In doing so, I uh, got graphite that was used in making this homemade isolation paint onto the pick card, staining it, but luckily it has a uh, plastic covering that I was able to take off afterwards so there was no permanent stain on the plastic white pick card. And here's what it looks like in the middle of wiring everything up with the pickups installed and the knob wiring not completely done. And here we have the guitar once it's been fully assembled before I put on the strings. And then here it is once the strings have been put on the guitar. So what are my conclusions on this guitar? What do I think of it? Would I recommend it or not? Let's talk about that in detail. So it's quite a cheap guitar, you have to know. It's, uh, it's the equivalent of the cheapest guitars on the market in terms of both parts and in terms of, of course, the uh, price you pay for the, the kit. Harley Benton has several other Telecaster guitars which seem to be the unassembled equivalent of this guitar for basically the same price, uh, which over here is 88 euros. I see on the, uh, on the British end they're selling it for 74 pounds. I'm sure you can go onto Toman's site, uh, toman.de, in order to see what it costs in your country if you're thinking about ordering it from a different country. They ship all over the world. Um, but it is a cheap guitar, so you have to start there. You can't expect too much from uh, you know, 88 euros might be worth around 100 bucks these days, 100 bucks US. You can't expect uh, the world of this guitar. That said, for spending 100 US dollars or 88 euros, I was pretty impressed. Um, I remember what my first electric guitar was like back in the 80s. I bought a cheap Yamaha guitar and it was just awful. Particularly, the, the, the thing I remember the most is how dull the pickups sounded. And these pickups, uh, while they're not amazing, uh, they're decent. They're much better than... Uh, what was it? I spent, uh, must have been like 250 bucks for this Yamaha back in the 80s uh, when I was like, I don't know, 14, 13 years old or something like that. And uh, the pickups were just awful. Even the, even the neck, I remember, was more uh, of a pain to play than the, uh, this guitar. So while it is among the poorest, probably, guitars you could find around these days, it's better than I expected. It's quite playable. As you saw in the uh, intro song, I have no problem playing lots of different styles on it, playing fast solos. It's, it's a very workable guitar. If you don't have too much money and you're interested in assembling a guitar and painting it and making it your own, and you like Telecasters, well, this is a great option. And also, Toman has other kit options. They also have a Les Paul, they also have a Stratocaster kit, they also have a SG kit, and I saw they have two bass kits, a uh, P bass kit and a jazz bass kit. Uh, so a word about the pickups. The pickups are fairly low output, which goes along with the sort of uh, retro vibe that they're going for. Um, again, the pickups, like I said, are not amazing. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them, uh, played clean, they sound fairly neutral and kind of boring, but I do really enjoy these pickups, uh, the more dirt you add to them, with the, the, the crunch sounds and the, uh, I wouldn't say high gain because you, you're not really going to get metal sounds out of this guitar, but uh, uh, crunch and distorted sounds with this guitar sound pretty cool to my ears, I, I, I enjoy it. 
Another thing to mention, you might have seen it in the photos, but there's no soldering required in this kit, which I was actually disappointed about because I wanted to have more soldering practice on a guitar that I didn't mind to mess up. So no soldering required, which is a good thing if you don't have a soldering iron and you don't want to solder. But if you're looking to solder as part of uh, this kit, uh, like I was, then it's a little bit of a disappointment. It just has a clip together, uh, connectors for the pickups to connect the pickups to the uh, the knob section of the electronics. Also, the quality of the knobs and the electronics uh, is higher than I thought it would be. The feel of the knobs and the electronics and the switches I actually like better than, for example, on my Guild Jetstar. And also, I like the electronics on this kit better than the um, the Squire Baritone Paranormal. Uh, guitar that I picked up recently and reviewed recently on my channel. I like the electronics on this kit better than the electronics on on those two guitars actually. Which is again somewhat surprising given the, the price of this kit. So would I buy another Harley Benton kit? Well yes I would and uh, I think sometime in the future when I feel up for it again uh, you have to be ready to to have a kit probably lying around on some sort of workbench or uh, in my case it was in the middle of my living room floor on newspaper for a while when I was in the middle of painting it. But uh, when I'm ready I think I probably will get another Harley Benton kit and I'm sure if uh, you don't want to order from Germany depending on where you are in the world you can probably find an equivalent kit uh, from a shop near you. Uh, and I just thought I would mention the list of tools that uh, they recommend that you have in order to make this kit just so that nobody orders this kit and uh, ends up not being able to assemble it. They say you should have screwdrivers, a rubber hammer, wrenches, pliers, uh, paint for any paint that you want to put on it, which I would recommend because the body is not very pretty without paint. And then you, you it would be better to have some sandpaper in order to prepare for painting the body. So that's those are the tools they recommend that you have and that's what I found I needed in practice. And so now that we've been through the um, most of this video, it so happens that I sometimes get bored and I want to mix things up. So when I recorded the demo of this guitar through an amp, I decided to mic up the amp with both an SM57 and a ribbon. Now I put the SM57 demos first because I think that's what most people are used to hearing and uh, will look for in a guitar if you want to compare it to other amp sounds on other videos. Most of them will probably use an SM57 if they're miking up a real amp. So I put that first, but I thought you might be interested in hearing what it sounds like uh, miked up with an SM57 and a ribbon mic together. and. I think that the uh, distorted sounds and the crunch sounds sound fine for the most part without the extra ribbon mic and especially if the song has a bass guitar I think there's no problem with just using an SM57 but especially the cleans since the pickups are so low output the clean sounds as you may have heard with the SM57 sound really pretty thin. And so uh, the clean sounds on this guitar really benefit from adding the ribbon to go add more low end to the mix, especially if you want to hear a clean sound out of this guitar solo. And so here are all the demo clips that I did with just the SM57 in the beginning of this video repeated, except here it is with the SM57 plus a ribbon mic. And the mix on the two is 50-50, as close as I could get it. Let's do the, uh, the bridge again. Middle position.
neck position. A little noodling, a little clean noodling on the bridge pickup. A little noodling in the bridge position. And a little noodling in the neck position. So I just activated the Tube Screamer on my Ibanez TSA 15H head that I went through for the clean section. So now we have a little bit of uh, grit or a little bit of dirt, not too much. And here's what it sounds like on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Middle position. And the neck position. So now I switched over to the Orange Micro Dark, which is a higher gain amp than the Ibanez TSA 15H, which is uh, pretty clean, except for that it has a built-in tube screamer, which you heard before. So now we're going to hear what this guitar sounds like with a little bit more gain. Here we are on the... Here we are on the bridge pickup. Middle position. Neck position. thing to mention if you want to know which ribbon mic I'm using. So this is my this is my ribbon mic. So the uh, classic studio ribbon mic that is often paired by professionals with an SM57 on a guitar amp is the Royer Labs R121, which is quite an expensive mic. It looks like the prices have gone down a little bit, but the, it's upwards of, of a thousand US. And I didn't want to spend that much on a ribbon mic without knowing whether I would use it too much or not. So I bought this mic, which I saw recommended on some forums at the time. I think I did a review of this on my channel if you want to look for it. It's not an extraordinary ribbon mic, but uh, I think it really does a good job paired with an SM57. I'm not a huge fan of it when uh, just used alone. I don't think that the high end of this uh, mic is quite nice enough to be used solo 
like uh, if you listen to the, some of the samples of a Royer Labs one, uh, Royer Labs R121, the high end is, is really nice for a ribbon mic on that microphone. It has more high end and the high end is, is pretty graceful. Um, the high end on this mic is not up to that level and I don't really feel compelled to use it solo, but I do find it really nice to have on, to be combined with another mic as I did in this case, particularly on electric guitar cabs. This is the LRM2 large ribbon microphone made by No Hype Audio. Let's do the, uh, the bridge again. Middle position. Neck position. A little noodling, a little clean noodling on the bridge pickup. A little noodling in the bridge position. And a little noodling in the neck position. So I just activated the Tube Screamer on my Ibanez TSA 15H head that I went through for the clean section. So now we have a little bit of uh, grit or a little bit of dirt, not too much. And here's what it sounds like on the bridge pickup. Middle position. And the neck position. So now I switched over to the Orange Micro Dark, which is a higher gain amp than the Ibanez TSA 15H, which is uh, pretty clean, except for that it has a built-in tube screamer, which you heard before. So now we're gonna hear what this guitar sounds like with a little bit more gain. Here we are on the, here we are on the bridge pickup. Middle position.
neck position.